productize and yourself. Yourself has uniqueness. Productize has leverage. Yourself has accountability. Productize has specific knowledge. Obviously, we want to be wealthy and we want to get there in this lifetime without having to rely on luck. A lot of people think making money is about luck. It's not. It's about becoming the kind of person that makes money. You know, I like to think that if I lost all my money and if you drop me on a random street in any English speaking country within five to 10 years, I'd be wealthy again, <laughs> right? Because it's just a skill set that I've developed. And so it's more about consistently creating wealth. By creating businesses and creating opportunities and creating investments, it hasn't been like a giant one off thing. My personal wealth has not been generated by one big year. It just sort of stacks up little bit chips at a time more options, more businesses, more investments, more things I can do. Wealth is the thing that you really want. Wealth is assets that earn while you sleep. Wealth is the factory that with the robots that's cranking out things. Wealth is the computer program that's running at night that's serving other customers. Wealth is even money in the bank that is being reinvested into other assets and into other businesses. Even a house can be a form of wealth because you can rent it out although that's probably a lower use of productivity in the land than actually doing some commercial enterprise. So my definition of wealth is much more businesses and assets that can earn while you sleep. Whenever you're doing anything in business, if you're looking towards the long term of getting wealthy, you should ask yourself, is this authentic to me? Is it myself that I'm projecting? And then am I productizing it? Am I scaling it? Am I scaling with labor or with capital or with code or with media? If you want to make money, you have to get paid at scale. And why you, that's accountability, at scale, that's leverage. And just you getting paid as opposed to somebody else getting paid, that's specific knowledge. The first thing to notice about specific knowledge is that you can't be trained for it. If you can be trained for it, if you can go to a class and learn specific knowledge, then somebody else can be trained for it too. And then we can mass produce and mass train people. Heck, we can even program computers to do it. And eventually we can program robots to walk around doing it. So if that's the case, then you're extremely replaceable. And all we have to pay you is the minimum wage that we have to pay you to get you to do it. So specific knowledge is the knowledge that you care about. Especially if you're later in life, let's say you're post 20, 21, 22, you almost don't get to choose which specific knowledge you have. Rather, you get to look at what you have already built by that point in time, and then you can build on top of it. If you really want to get paid in this world, you want to be number one at whatever it is that you're doing. You can't just pick something arbitrary. You can't say, I'm going to be the fastest runner in the world, and now you've got to beat the same bolt. That's too hard of a problem. But what you can do is you can keep changing what your objective is until it arrives to your specific knowledge, your skill sets, your position, your capabilities, your location, your interests, and then converges to making you number one. So when you're searching for what to do, you actually have two different foci that you have to keep in mind at all points. And one of those is, I want to be the best at what I do. And the second is, what I do is flexible so that I am the best at it. You know, at this point, some of the more successful people in the world are that way. Oprah gets paid for being Oprah. Joe Rogan gets paid for being Joe Rogan. And they're being authentic to themselves. So what this tweet is trying to say simultaneously is that you want to be number one, but you want to keep changing what you do. So if you want to be successful in life, you just have to get comfortable managing multivariate problems, multiple objective functions at once. And this is one of those cases where you have to map at least two or three at once. So if getting wealthy is your goal, you are going to have to work as hard as you can. But hard work is absolutely no substitute for who you work with and what you work on. What you work on is probably the most important thing. Finding product market founder fit, to expand on Mark Andreessen's definition, he came up with product market fit, but I would add product market founder fit, which is how well you are personally suited to that business. The combination, that three, that should be your overwhelming goal. Picking the right people to work with is the next most important piece. And then third comes how hard you work. But they're like three legs of a stool. If you shortchange on any one of them, the whole stool is going to fall down. So it's not like you can pick one over the other that easily. So 
the order of operations when you're building a business is, or even building your career, is first figure out what should I be doing. So inspiration is a beautiful and powerful thing. And when you have it, just seize it. So people talk about impatience. When do you know to be impatient? When do you know to be patient? My glib tweet on this was impatience with actions and patience with the results. And I think that's actually a good philosophy for life. I advise a lot of people who are looking at which startup to join in Silicon Valley. I say basically pick the one that's going to have the best alumni network for you in the future. Look at the PayPal mafia. They work with a bunch of geniuses, so they all got rich. So just try and pick based on the highest intelligence, energy, and integrity people that you can find. And then finally, once you've picked the right thing to work on and the right people to work with, then you work as hard as you can. We squander our time with the death of a thousand cuts. So another tweet I had was, you should be too busy to do coffee while still keeping an uncluttered calendar. People who know me know that I'm famous for simultaneously doing two things. One is having a very clean calendar. I have almost no meetings on it. And there are people that I meet with when they see my calendar, they almost weep. While at the same time, I am busy all the time. I'm always doing something. And when you have something important or something valuable, other busy, interesting people will meet with you. Your calling card has to be, hey, here's what I've done. Here's what I can show you. Let's meet and I'll be respectful of your time if this is useful to you. And I find that there are very busy, important people who will take your meeting, but you have to come with the proper calling card. All the people who tweet and who email famous or rich people say something. And when you are just meeting people and hoping to get that lucky break, you're relying on type one luck, which is blind luck, and type two luck, which is hustle luck. But what you're not getting is type three or type four luck, which are the better kinds, where you spend time developing a reputation, working on something, developing a unique point of view, and being able to spot opportunities that others can't. A busy calendar and a busy mind will destroy your ability to do great things in this world. If you want to be able to do great things, whether you're a musician or whether you are a entrepreneur or whether you're an investor, you need free time and you need a free mind.